Good morning, Rioteers! I got a serious vlog topic this morning. It's a serious day. The Sochi Olympics started last week, and the world is taking an opportunity to rebuke Russia on its gay rights policies, which is really good, uh, because they're ter the, the, those policies are terrible. On the other hand, we're also taking the opportunity to sort of watch sports and ignore the fact that we have a lot of problematic policies at home that we're not doing anything about. Um... And there's uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I can't address this all today, partly because I, I don't have any real answers for that. In fact, every time I talk about privilege or power, I tend to get things wrong. And if I do get things wrong, please let me know in the comments, because I want to not get things wrong. I want to understand things better, and I want to be a better person. So yeah, in the, let me know in the comments, and I will re reply, and we will talk about it. One of the s phrases that comes up a lot when you're talking about the, the rights of marginalized groups is the idea that, well... You know, the, the people just need to realize there's no black people, there's no white people, there's no gay people or straight people. It's just people. And as long as we remember that it's just people, we'll be fine. And that is a thing that we say a lot. It is a thing that we put on signs and billboards and campaigns. And it is a thing I think that is deeply problematic for a bunch of reasons. Um, to start with, it trivializes the everyday struggle of these people. I mean, no matter what, what, what group it is... It, you, it is a struggle every day, and when it, when we say, oh, I, I only see people, what we're really saying is, I am blind to your struggle. Worse than that, it absolves us. We take it on, a, on ourselves as some kind of absolution, that because we can't see these things, we're not participating in them. That is not how structural oppression works. That is not how systemic oppression works. We are absolutely participating in them. And what we need to be doing is recognizing the ways in which we're doing that and stopping that. And the only people that can help us do that are marginalized people. Are, are people who are at disadvantages because we do it and we think it's completely normal. We think it's ordinary. We don't notice. And that's a part of privilege and a part of power. And it's a really big problem. I mean, the third problem with, with saying it's just humans is that it's not true. We're not really colorblind in that way. We're not... We do notice, uh, there's been a ton of studies on this, on implicit bias, and the fact that we're aware of maybe some of our biases, or we, or, or we, we think that we don't have biases in areas, doesn't mean we don't. It just means we have biases we don't know about. The fourth thing is, is probably one of the biggest, is that it discards a portion of a person's identity. Being black, or white, or brown, or Indian, or, you know, a million other things, you know, being straight, being gay, being pan... It isn't just a quirk. It isn't just some weird random fact about a person. It's part of who you are. It's a culture. It's, it's sexuality. Like It informs things about how you act in everyday life. I mean, it's a varying degrees and varying people. But when we say, I don't see that part of you, I mean, think about that. I mean, really, really think about that. That is a part of your identity that is not important to me. Well, guess what? And this, I mean, number five, real quick. That is not a thing which is within our power. Saying things like that is deliberately, it is an exercise of power. It says, I get to decide the things that matter about you. I get to decide. And I think it's not any of these things. I think it's that, you know, you're a human being, you have a skull and a heart and, you know, arms and legs and or whatever, and, you know, you're a human being by whatever standard I set for human beings, and that is the thing that matters. And all these other things, they're extraneous to you. Well, they're not extraneous to you. They're part of you. We're not human first and then these things. These things are an integral part of of what makes us human beings. Because we all have them. We all have identities. They are part of the things that make us people. And we need to be really careful about how we exert power over other people's identities. And, and the things that other people, that are important to other people. Because even if it doesn't matter to us, which again, it does, and they know it, it matters to them. Just to close off real quick, I am legit for real colorblind. I did a video on it over there. I mean, you can you can go check it out. But the point is, I know that in, in art, in fashion, in painted miniatures, there is a world of nuance in the in colors. 
that I can't see. I'm physically unable to see it, and sometimes it is the most frustrating thing in the world. Well, being colorblind in, in the philosophical sense blinds you to the nuance of other people's experience. It doesn't make you better. In fact, it's not a thing I'd wish on anybody. So I will see you guys on Friday with a special Valentine's Day Polar song, um, Thursday with video games as always, and um, I hope you enjoy the Olympics, but I also hope that you take the opportunity to reflect on some of the ways that we treat people and act about them. So yeah, I will see you guys later. Close your eyes, darling.